she randomly shows up again. There's about to be a lot of drop lore drops right now, I feel. Oh, Ether. I'm also live on Twitch, so follow me there if you want to join the fun. You may also know me from my previous channel, Go Dog Chainsaw. You can also donate to me on Ko-Fi if you like my funny edits and reactions. Thank you, enjoy the video. Hey, doggos, it is time for all to be revealed on this special and grand debut day. We will learn all there is about the false sky. Not really. What Scaramouche yapped about all those patches ago. We'll learn about the primordial sea. Why Sir Taloji decided to keep his pet whale in such a large fucking aquarium. It's time to learn the truth about the loom of fate. Well, that's what I hope so anyway. What's up, doggos? Welcome back to another Genshin Impact reaction video. This one being the Archon Quest for 4.7 Bedtime Story. Sounds like your typical wholesome mihoyo plot. So I have nothing to be worried about. We'll just meet up with our long lost sibling and have a nice and friendly chat before nothing totally terrible happens also straight off the bat it feels very weird not seeing you guys over here usually you guys would be over here and my obs studio will be open except this time i'm recording by myself i'll stop blabbering oh my god oh aha you don't need to worry about resin capping out anymore thank goodness gracious the bedtime story our conquest unlocked after listening to the bedtime story that day, all the hilly churls had a dream. The young souls waved goodbye, and the people and the sun slept together warmly. What the What is that even? Cold Case Commission. Go to the Sumeru Adventurers Guild to talk to Catherine. You arrive at the Adventurers Guild in Sumeru. Catherine seems to have a very tricky commission for your docket. Now, where we left off in the whole Archon storyline, as well as with the last interlude chapter that involved Daneslave and the siblings, we saved Fontaine from the Wraths of the primordial water because Sertology felt like getting up to a tiny bit of mischief. Craft his perfect vision of the world. Skirt name dropped a whole bunch of people. Well, Sertology is one of them, and there was also Vel Veldrofnir, if I remember it correctly. And these are all very vague names we know little to nothing about. Veldrofnir is what they call a visionary, which is the role that's one tier above an astrologist in the world of Tevat. Astrologists can read the fate of individuals, while from what I remember, visionaries read the entire fate of the world, of Tevat anyway. There is only two confirmed visionaries, one of them is Veldrovnir, and Veldrovnir could very well be the person who spread the prophecy of Fontaine drowning in the first place. Now, connecting back to the previous quest, Caribur, it brought up the importance of Kaya's bloodline in the Conrian dynasty too. Which, speaking of, Arlecchino is also part of the Conrian dynasty. It's the one, I believe, before Kaya, the Crimson Moon dynasty. We stumbled upon the memory of our sibling, where once Clotar started it all with our Abyss sibling. After the events of Caribur, his, his own son, you know, as a hilly churl, and also the whole sinner situation, which it's been a while since we've experienced that story, so parts of it I'm still unsure about. Thanks to you wonderful people, by the way, for letting me brush up on so much lore. The sinner could be either Gold, Rhine Daughter, Sertology, the Foul, the, the Foul, or Veldrovnir. It could be either one of them, or they could all be sinners. We don't know. So that's what I'm hoping this might clear up. Ah, perfect. It's you two. I have a commission here that has your names written all over it. In fact, I'd even go so far as to say you're the only ones for the job. I came across this commission while reviewing our backlog not too long ago. It seems simple. 
but our records indicate that over a dozen successive efforts to complete it have all ended in failure, despite attempts by several accomplished and renowned adventurers. By the way, this is Catherine, right? It's not Nahida peeping around again. Well, that's us for sure! Flattery will get you everywhere with Paimon, but I can't guarantee we'll be able to complete it either. This commission was jointly issued by the residents of Vimara Village. They say one of their own villagers has gone missing, but the problem is, they don't know the missing person's name. They can only provide information about his general appearance. Uh, they're all from the same village, but they don't even know his name? Maybe be it's because he comes and goes a lot. It would probably be best to go to Vimara Village and ask around first. Alright then, let's go! Paimon's starting to get really curious about this whole thing. Act f Chapter 4, Act 4, Bedtime Story. I have to say, I don't have the fondest memory of Vimara Village. The most memorable thing I remember from here is that traitor Fatui agent. You know, that quest. Baram. Ah, so you hear about that then. Ah, you're not the first, that's for sure. We've certainly made a lot of trouble for you all. So, this person we're looking for. What's his name? Where did he live? Does he have any relatives? Uh, I, I don't know. Mm. I really have no clue. I couldn't tell you. You couldn't tell me. Okay. Um, I guess you are really sick of answering questions. He rejected that questioning rather quickly, though. Didn't sound like you're being upfront with me, if I'm gonna be honest. Is there anything else you can tell us? I know it may seem like we don't have anything to offer by way of information, but I promise you, we all have a very strong impression of him. When you live in the same village as someone, you develop a lot of memories together, you know? True. We just don't know the specifics. Maybe we did at one point, but that information is long gone by now. So, Seth person's been here a while, but none of you recall what they even look like. Either you're keeping something from me, or it sounds like a whole memory wiping thing. You know, like Ermansoul? Young guy. In his early 20s, probably. Incredibly kind sort of person. Always willing to lend a helping hand. I I'd chat with him when I didn't have any customers. I even saw him stick out his neck for others on more than one occasion. <laughs> Very interesting guy, that one. Seems like he left a pretty good impression on you. But of course, everyone in the village is pretty fond of him. We wouldn't have issued that commission otherwise. Yet you don't remember much. This is either an NPC that's gonna slowly connect us to meeting Ether, or it's just Ether himself. It certainly doesn't sound like Dane's life. Because Ether would look like someone in their 20s. With the traveler's height, anyway, you know? Hi, Grandpa Amadea! We're here to help you look for the guy that's gone missing. Could you tell us a bit about him? Of course. I'm happy to help any way I can. See, the thing is, it sounds like they've only been around until recently. With my failing eyesight, I'm afraid I can't offer much about his appearance. But I do remember hearing the sound of his voice. Not recently, of course. That loss has left me feeling quite empty. I don't think his parents are still living in the village. But somehow, he never seemed lonely. In fact, he was usually the one offering companionship to others. He would often take time to visit the elderly, or play with the orphans in the village. And whenever someone had something on their mind, he was there to listen with open ears. He always knew just what to say. He seems like such a nice and gentle person. No wonder his disappearance affected you all so much. You wouldn't happen to know any details about his name, address, or family situation, right? The physical I'm description. To admit it, but I just can't remember. No matter how you look at it, I should know those things. But for some reason, no matter how hard I try to remember, the information right. just doesn't come. Perhaps my age really has caught up with me this time. It's not just you, Gramps. You're fine. Well, Traveler, what do you think? Ermansoul. There's probably more to this case than meets the eye. A lot of things are not adding up. I don't think so, too. Like, the name thing. It's so weird that no one remembers his name. Everyone remembers the presence of such a person, but and that's it. It's like this guy's been erased from reality or something. Mm-hmm. You mean we're getting on the same line here? Yes, sir. I would say it's more like he's someone who only exists in people's memories. Wait, so you're saying... 
It's not that he's been erased, necessarily, but more like he never existed to begin with? Could it be like what happened with the Greater Lord Rukadevata? Like some sort of mass alteration of people's memories? You two are the adventurers who just arrived, right? Oh. My name is Atosa, by the way. I grew up here in Vimara Village. Anyway, I just wanted to say, please keep searching for a missing villager. Mm. I'm begging you. You have to find him. I'm sure we'll track him down. We'll certainly try our best. Yeah, no need to worry. We'll give it our best shot. So, were you close to the missing villager? Are there any leads you can give us? See, I'm thinking. The way the Aramansol works, it doesn't alter the events of history. It alters the memories people remember of past events. So, in reality, those things still happen. It's just people remember a different version of the history. But usually, it does like a very clean job of erasing someone. If it, this is really Aramansol, people shouldn't be able to remember fragments of said person. I'm not sure this counts as a lead, but follow me. There's a place I'd like to show you. Alright. Is this the place? Under this tree? Yep. I know it doesn't look like much, but this place is very meaningful to me. It's so full of memories. We used to always sit together under this tree and talk. Sometimes we would look up at the clouds in the sky or stop to feel the wind against our skin. We could sit there for hours at a time, never realizing how long it had been. I was actually adopted by the people of Amar Village. Oh, okay. The forest rangers found me in the woods as a child. I was surrounded by such good people and growing up in the village was so lively. Still, there were times when I couldn't help but feel incredibly alone. When something's bothering you, or when you have good news to share, you always want to talk about it with somebody. True. But for the longest time, I didn't know who I could talk to or if I should say anything at all. Everyone has their own problems to deal with. Even if I might want to confide in others, I don't want to become a burden. They're bringing up the theme of family again. This is worrying. I think I get what you mean. That's what family is for. <laughs> you know exactly how I feel? I used to have someone just like that. A family member that I could talk to no matter what. But now, I have a lot of friends who understand me and will be happy to hear me out. Still, we've... We've lost the most important person in our life. When it comes to our missing villager, well... Hmm. I guess you could say that to me. He felt like both a family member I could rely on and a friend who could really understand me. No matter what came my way, I knew I could always talk to him. He was so thoughtful and pure. And patient, too. Whenever I talked to him, he would always seem so interested, as if the things I was describing were just as important to him as they were to me. I just really want to see him again. Wow. You two must have been really close. Huh. Come to think of it, every time we talked, it always seemed to be around dusk. Just like right now. Time always passed by really slowly. Even when it felt like we'd been talking for hours, the sun would still be at the same position in the sky. Well, time always seems to pass slower when you're relaxed, right? Uh, what's wrong, Traveler? It was always the same time of day, and time never seemed to pass. What Atosa just told us about time could be the key to unraveling this whole mystery. Time. Oh. Hey. Look at those hilly trails over there. Doesn't it seem like they're acting a little strange? Hey, my fellow Conrians, what up, bro? Uh, okay, that's no good. The Abyss Order. Could they be the ones behind all of this? Oh. Hello, how are you? Uh-oh, we've been spotted. Quick, get ready to fight. Bro, you're one single power Abyss Mage. What the hell do you think you're about to do? Look, if I do this... Now that I think about it, the hilly trolls around Vimara village have been a lot more active lately. Description did say they had a dream. A few moments later. Hmm. Wait a second. That person! It's... it's Dainsliff! Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, okay, he just... He randomly shows up again. Ah, it's you two. Oh, all the time. <laughs> this guy. Well, I'll leave you all to it then. I should head back to the village and check up on Chief Amadea and the others anyway. Hm. See you later! Yep, see you later, Atosa! Well, Dane, it's uh... Why do 
you always have to pop up out of nowhere like that? Exactly. Is it your life's mission to jump scare us or something? It's been a while. It's hardly personal, or intentional for that matter. As long as you and I are both in pursuit of the Abyss Order, we're bound to cross paths. Since last time, you're still in Sumeru, or you just actually came back to Sumeru. The Abyss Order is it's most certainly good. planning something in this area. Or worse, their plan could already be in motion. The Loom of Fate. The Hillitrol activity is causing a lot of problems for the people here. We should stick around for a while and protect the village, don't you think? The best way to protect them is by figuring out what the Abyss Order is truly planning. Mm. That is how we prevent further tragedy. Well, let's see what more we can learn from the villagers. And after that, we you also owe us many answers. And you shall have them. I never intended to hide anything from you. You're trying to find our village to gather intel based on what you've learned. You question villagers of... Guys, forgive me. I try to read as fast as I can every time. So that was the commission that brought you here to Vimara Village. Uh, we, yes. Someone who seems to only exist in people's memories. That is indeed quite intriguing. I would agree that it's unlikely you have a simple missing persons case on your hands. However, any possible connection to the Abyss Order is still unclear. How about the intel you promised me? Right! That mysterious voice she heard in her brother's memory. The one who called himself a sinner. Who is he? Actually, right into it, Paimon. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you, Paimon. I'll treat you to something later. Traveler, let me ask you this. Do you believe your sibling to have betrayed you? Oh, damn. He dropped this line way earlier than I thought. I want to have faith in him. He's our sibling. He must have his reasons. He's seen one cycle of this world before. And remember when we were in Fontaine, that whole thing? There was that note how we are in the final cycle of this world, Tevat. I forgot the specific name for this cycle, but it did state it's the final one. Hmm. I sense hesitation in your words. After all, you still haven't figured out the whole truth of what happened. We are so far from the truth. There's still hope for the two of you to reconcile. Irreparable damage has not yet been done. The sinner you wish to know about, his situation is different. He and his fellow sinners have long betrayed me and long betrayed their nation. His name is Vedrfolnir, the visionary. Oh my f- He- He is Vedrfolnir. The one of the visionaries that can see the history of all of Tevat. I'm loath to admit it, but he is also my kin, my older brother. Oh, that's something I don't know. What happened between the two of you? What really happened in Karnia back then? There were five of them. The Five Sinners of Kanria. There's about to be a lot of drop lore drops right now, the I feel. The Wise, Roptatir. The Vision, Vedafolnir. Gold, Rhinedaughter. The Foul, Sertologi. And Rehir of Solnari, Rerir. God damn, he named every one of them! All three of them are sinners. Not familiar with the first and the fifth. No matter how eroded my memory may become, I will never forget their names. One day, I shall have my vengeance. You like Vengeance? Wait, some of those names sound really familiar. Rhinedaughter is the one who created Albedo. Sertologi is Skirk's master. And the one we just learned about, Dane's brother, Vedafolnir. If he was the voice of the sinner, then the one who inspired Kotar to create the Abyss Order was him! Somehow everything is connected. If that's true, then the stone slates we found in the ruins in Fontaine, the ones that outlined Fontaine's prophecy, that was likely Vendrofolnir's doing as well. Stone slates? It seems like they were put here as an offering. The uh, could prophecy? we take down and have a look? Wait, but like, it's it's more parts to the prophecy. Yo! They were once people of great esteem in Kanria. Those who carried the hopes of the nation. Six of us. Together. We should have been the ones to prevent the disaster. The ones to stop the Vinster King from continuing to rock the foundation of the world. The Vinster King. Well, Rhinedaughter had a part to play in the downfall of Conria, so... The five of them craved something more. They could not resist the call of the Abyss, and divided among themselves a power that could destroy the world. 
I know Rhyndaughter mastered the art of Chemia, probably with the help of Abyss now. So they became sinners, but also transcendent beings, each in possession of world-shattering power. Of six, five is like this now. And when the cataclysm occurred, not one of them stood up in defense of their nation. Not one came forward to prevent the tragedy, and for that, they shall never have my forgiveness. And then, my sibling came into contact with your brother. Indeed, if they are not stopped, the day is sure to come when they will also betray the entire world. I've continued to investigate the questions surrounding the Loom of Fate. It's been quite some time since the initial operation was launched. By retrieving the eye of the first field tiller, we were able to stop part of their plan from coming to fruition. All the way back in Mondstadt. Weren't they going to use it to corrupt Osio and make a god or something? Indeed. However, it's obvious that was just some sort of technical experiment. The eye was integral to their plan, yet somehow, despite failing to obtain it, they've skipped the experimental phase and found some other way to keep moving forward. Our most pressing concern is to determine the purpose of the Loom of Fate. From there, we'll be able to deduce the Abyss Order's true objective. Based on the intel I've gathered so far, I suspect the Loom of Fate is related to the Ley Lines in some way. You were able to observe your sibling's memories last time, yes? I believe that was due to the fact that the Ley Lines in that area were unstable. My recent investigation has shown that Abyss Order activity in a particular area is usually followed by a series of issues with the ley lines. And one of the things that flows through the ley lines are memories. Wait! Then our commission here in Vimara Village, the person who seems to exist only in people's memories, could it be connected? It's certainly possible. I'll join your investigation tomorrow. This missing persons case could very well turn out to be the key to unraveling these mysteries. The next day... <laughs> he really is still here. Uh, Dane? Hello? I should have scanned him with Nahira. <laughs> Imagine you scan him and it just it spoils the next, like, seven arcs of the story. The missing person from your commission. Could you describe them to me? Young guy? Early 20s? Seriously, Dane, what's going on? There appear to be certain memories in my mind that weren't there before. What do you mean? Memories of him. I remember handing him the eye of the first field tiller. Huh? What? And it appears he possesses the ability to implant memories into the minds of others. How's that even possible? All the memories the villagers have of him! Maybe they never knew him at all! Whatever the Abyss Order is planning, an important truth has been revealed to us this morning. Their goal is still to obtain the Eye of the First Field Tiller. Oh. They haven't stopped searching for it. I am the only person who knows its location. Perhaps implanting that particular memory was an attempt to interfere with my mind in some way. No, but also, uh, if they if they're still looking for it, and this whoever this person is that has the power of memory manipulation, to sow doubt in your mind, and then imagine they don't actually know where it is. They're doing this so we can guide them to the location of the eye. But what if someone follows us? If we go straight there and someone's on our tail, aren't we just exposing the eye's location? Yes, Lumine. Thank you. Maybe that's the reason the abyss order implanted the memory in the first place to force Dane to confirm the eye's location. Given what I know of him, though. I'm sure Dainsafe has already thought of that possibility. It seems he might have already had a plan. Let's go. Of course. I hope you know what you're doing, Dane. He, okay, so he took that shit all the way from Mondstadt and brought it all the way to... Here? What? Right beside the chasm. Don't even try, don't even try, you fucking... So you hit it way out here? Not an easy place to discover, that's for sure. Well... Let's go check to see if it's safe. Traveler, wait. What? Uh, Are you okay? What? We've no time to lose. Let's head inside. What? Dude, you just told me. Oh, God. He was going to warn us of something and he... F what the hell was that? 
I don't like this. This spells trouble. Place of Revelations. Dane brings you to where he hid the eye before. As you continue onward, the answers will soon be revealed. But when you step within, there seems to be some strange, something strange going on with Dane. Not, I'm really skeptical about this. We're back here again. Well, maybe it's another different domain, but it looks similar. Inkonomia, Conrean architecture. Make sure all the runes are pointing in the direction indicated by the light. That should unlock the mechanism. Boom, bam, bop. Well, that was easy. <laughs> ah, the door is open. Let's go. Our destination is just up ahead. All these statues. Looks like we can't go any further. Be on your guard. I sense the presence of the Abyss. It's the Abyss Order! They're here! Dude. Play the They pulled out the cryo one when I have Arlecchino. Are they insane? Just as I suspected. The false memories were a trap. The Abyss Order just wanted to follow us here. Now that they're in the vicinity, we should have a chance to see. Can you feel that? There's been a disturbance in the ley lines. It must be the work of the Abyss. He really isn't pain. Wow, you must be really sensitive to that sort of thing. Byman doesn't feel it! You too. Do as I say. Use that mechanism over there and leave this place. Leave you here on your own? Will you be alright? The Abyss Order is putting something in motion. If you return to Vimara Village, I suspect you might finally but have the opportunity to locate I the I thought we came villager. here to look for the- Just think of it as a way to divide and conquer. Alright. Something about this is really wrong. Dane does have a point. But something feels off. What am I still missing? The eye! We came here for the eye! Dane! What is it? Oh. Whoa. Who is this? Either? Who is this? Oh, Ether. I knew going along with your trap would be the only way to meet with you face to face. Dane, you can't. Against him alone? He has the sword, Dane. You risked your safety. And that of the eye. That's quite the gamble, Danesliff. But I believe that I am the one walking into a trap laid by the Twilight Sword. Zack's finally getting his paycheck. Whoopee! Same thing goes for Sarah, you know, on the other end for people who are using ether. So you came here all on your own? What about those followers of yours? When the Twilight Sword is prepared for battle, any army I could send would only be marching to their doom. Better that I face you alone. I know you must have a lot to say, but if it's a conversation you want, you'll have to defeat me first. Dane. 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 The Abyss Order's on the move! The ley lines are all out of whack! We better hurry back to Vimara Village and see what's going on! Uh, hey! Look at those hilly trails over there! They seem strangely calm? Weren't they acting super agitated just a little while ago? Why are they so calm all of a sudden? Butterflies? Wait, I hear something. In the new world, they bade farewell to the Shrouded Sun. At last. They no longer needed to dwell on their suffering, or try to differentiate between various thoughts of blasphemy. Such was the price they paid, and thus their souls became cleansed and pure. You see, we're both still here. 
We've reclaimed an endless amount of time to love. Release your tears. You no longer need to hold back your sorrow. It's that voice again. What does it mean? In the end, he whispered softly. Sleep well, father. Sleep well, my beloved people. When you awake, that which differentiates us shall be no more. It almost sounds like a poem or some kind of story. Well, now that the hilly trolls have calmed down, Vimara Village should be safe at least. Let's put the situation to the side for now. Dane said this might be our chance to find the missing villager. Dane. So we should head back to Vimara Village before it's too late. Dane. Grandpa Amadea, is everyone all right? The Abyss Order seems to be up to something nearby. Oh, also, you didn't happen to come across any clues about the missing villager while we were gone, did you? Hmm? Someone's gone missing, you say? Oh my god. Who would that be? Oh, wow, that's even worse. No one remembers him now. Oh, what about the lady? Let me guess. Not him either. Someone's gone missing? Who? Mm-hmm. Uh, just as expected. He's around 20 years old, and you said he was a kind, warm-hearted person? Oh, I know who you're talking about. Uh, y you do? Then there's only one person who fits the bill. No doubt about it. But why'd you say he's gone missing? Have you seen him recently? Yeah, I just saw him leave the village. There was someone else with him, too. They couldn't have gone far. What? Oh, this is so weird. Bayram seems to remember him. And apparently he just saw him? Do you think maybe it's not that there's something wrong with people's memories, but that we've somehow returned to a time before he went missing? I doubt returning to the past would be that simple. Given everything Dane mentioned about disturbances with ley lines, I'd say it's far more likely that this related to memories in some way. Oh, we're in a memory again, possibly? They're presently traversing Severn's memories. If this person only exists in people's memories, maybe we're in someone's memory right now. This would be plausible. Right. Paimon totally forgot about the Leyline disturbances. We're in someone else's memory. Who knows how long this Leyline disturbance is gonna last. We might not have that much time and we don't even know whose memory this is. Let's go through what we know so far. Good idea. That'll help us narrow things down. We pretty much figured out that the missing villager has the ability to... Implant memories into the minds of others. Right! That! Could we try to figure out more about him using what we know of his ability? Like, does it maybe leave a trace that would somehow give him away? Implanting memories into the minds of others must be an imperfect process. There's no way the new memories could perfectly blend in with the old ones. There has to be some kind of tell. Time does not pass within false memories. Time. If time was allowed to pass within the false memories, there's a higher chance they might conflict with someone's original recollection. That would make it much harder to avoid suspicion. How they watched the sun. It was like at sunset every time. It has to be this. No wonder! All this time in the sky hasn't changed a bit! That must mean time isn't passing! That's the tell of the fake memories! The implanted memories are basically taking place outside of the regular 24 hours of the day. Why would he implant nice memories for the for the lady? If we consider this in conjunction to what we know already know, then the question of whose memories this is seems to have an obvious answer. It's the same time they always watch the sunset. Atosa. The color of the sky coincides with the moment in time she described. It's gotta be her. Oh, come to think of it. Every time we talked, it always seemed to be around dusk. Mm -hmm. Just like right now. Time always passed by really slowly. Even when it felt like we'd been talking for hours, the sun would still be at the same position in the sky. Yep, that has to be it. This is definitely Atosa's memory. To the tree. Yeah, that's where they'll be. Is... Oh... Oh, that outfit. He's not trying to scare the children on purpose. <laughs> oh, there I go again. Always talking about my own things. Do you maybe have anything you want to share? Um, Who's it's okay if you don't. You, you could also just talk about what you think of me. Uh -huh. 
Well, it kind of did sound like she had a thing for him. Oh, I... The things don't uh, line up. I, I think you're an incredibly strong and thoughtful young woman. Damn. You'll meet many amazing people and live a very happy life. You won't miss someone like me. Huh? Are those your friends over there? He's gonna know, isn't he? We finally found him, but why does he look familiar? Friends? I guess you could say that. It must have taken them a lot of effort to find me. I should see what they need. I'm sorry, Atosa. We'll have to continue this conversation another time. Another time, huh? Yeah. Okay, I'll head back to the village mm. then. Talk to you... some other time. It's nice to see you, Traveler. I believe this is the first time we've met. You are... Look, Kari Bear, you... You still have Mama's scarf on your arm. That means she's watching over you, protecting you. So how could you be dead? Didn't Kari Bear... It closed in on the ribbon on his arm. But he was a hilly churl. How does that make sense? Is it? You're... Kari Bear Alberic. Clotar's son? How are you... like... this? That's quite the surprise. I don't believe I've met you before. Oh, I see. It was the memory, wasn't it? Your sibling's memory. You saw the me from back then. This is Atosa's memory. I came here to say goodbye to her. I suppose I'll just leave her a message instead. Come, let's find somewhere else to talk. Whoa, 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 I can't translate that. It's a farewell message to Atosa. Farewell, Atosa, I apologize for making you know me unwillingly. Still, I don't wish you to forget me. On the spot anyway, probably someone online already has this translated. Damn, sh That's the That's the place from the trailer. This ethereal music. Where is the proof of existence? You're the one with the memory altering capabilities. How can you do that? How and how are you human again? What is happening? <sighs> oh. It looks like it takes a toll on him every time he uses that, though. What is this place? I suppose you could call it the realm of my consciousness. I'm someone who no longer exists in the real world, after all. As you well know. You look quite exhausted. Uh, it's nothing. I still have enough strength to play the part of a good host. I've always hoped that I'd get the chance to talk to you like this. And now, the time has finally arrived. What exactly is the Loom of Fate? Extreme sorrow and pain. Hope and regret coursing through your veins in a degree of abyssal power that defies comprehension. Father told me that once I possessed all those elements, I would become the loom of fate. But despite his intentions for me, I never truly became the loom of fate. I was merely used as a means for its construction. In truth, I died the moment I set everything in motion. The person you see before you now is nothing but a remnant of consciousness left over within the Loom of Fate. So yeah, he did die back then. As for your question, the Loom of Fate is a device capable of weaving ley lines. In its primitive form, it can only be used to create and implant memories. But, as more of it is completed, its power becomes stronger and stronger. Until finally, it has the power to weave real ley lines of its own. Th pretty much reshape reality. Once fully completed, the moment it gains the power to weave ley lines, it loses the lower level ability to influence memories. But it also becomes a tool that can change the entire world. Yeah, well, like by then you have no need of that. So that was the source of your ability to implant memories. Yes. I have the ability to control the loom in its semi-completed form. I suppose you can think of it as a form of compensation. After all... Its existence cost me my life. So the memories that suddenly appeared in Dane's mind were implanted by Caribur through the half-finished Loom of Fate. That makes sense, but I'm still lost at a loss to why he went so far as to introduce himself to all the residents 
of Vermar village? Did he just want to feel alive again? So that at least he meant something to this world or, you know? I was wrong to implant those memories. I'm sorry I caused so much trouble, not only for everyone in the village, but for you as well. I just wanted them to feel like I once existed it in is. this world, as if I had a chance at life. <sighs> but is there any kind of meaning to this? Does only existing in people's memories really count as living? I had to know what it would be like if I had my own life, what kind of person I would be, what other people would think of me. Chief Amadea, Aram, Granny Jahiyat, Atosa. Atosa. That's the two that it's oh it's two wooden carvings on the top of the tree. What would it be like if I could live alongside them? No cataclysm, no curse, just a quiet life in a peaceful village. His whole thing is really quite unfortunate, to be honest. I was curious, so I selfishly tried to have my own life. Even the form you see before you was nothing but an invention based on my father's appearance, an imagined version of what I would look like if I had the chance to grow up. In the end, this all stems from the tragedy that occurred in Conria back then. As I understand it, even though you only appeared in their memories, your existence was a great comfort to them. <sighs> well, now that I've found you, let us continue this conversation some other time. Dane might still need my help. Captain Danesliff? Twilight Sword, you mean? Uh, no need to meet up with him. Things should already be settled on his end. Settled? As someone who could only exist in people's memories. The fact that I'm able to talk to you in my consciousness like this can only mean one thing. The loom of fate has already been completed. What? The loom of fate is already complete? That means the eye of the first field tiller must have fallen into the hands of the abyss. Could something have happened to Dane? Your brother's there, Lumine. He won? No need to worry about Captain Danesleff. He's absolutely fine. The only reason he lost the eye was because I happened to guess exactly what he was planning. Captain Danesliff has had the eye inside his body this whole time, hasn't he? That thing's really fucking big, by the way. His plan was to lure the Abyss Order to a false location, capitalizing on their pursuit of the eye in order to have the chance to confront the prince. He would then hand the eye to you and tell you to take it away from that location. Oh. But he never expected anyone would have the ability to implant memories. But Dane never handed me the eye. Because in his mind, he had given it to you already. Wait, does that mean he gave Dane a false memory? You made him think that when? Before you two entered that false location. Traveler, wait. Oh. <sighs> We've no time to lose. Let's head inside. That's what that was. I'm sorry, Traveler. But I needed the Loom of Fate to be completed. To do that, we had to retrieve the Eye. We ended up falling into their trap anyways. Tavat's Ley Line system is deeply entrenched in the planet. Creating new Ley Lines can neither replace nor extend the ones that already exist. In the face of everything they could be planning, I fear I'm too insignificant to even get a glimpse of the bigger picture. In any case, I had my own use for the Loom of Fate. And my goal, at least, has been achieved. Your goal? You remember my father, don't you? Clotar Alberic. I believe you saw him in your sibling's memory. Thanks to him, I found a lot of the Draculuses, but, you know... After he used the power of the Abyss to restore consciousness to my hilly churl form, to comfort me, my father told me a story... Hey. ...that this was a fairy tale world... There ...where you I had are. to take on the form of a little monster. My goal was simple, to use the Loom of Fate in its near-completed form, when its ability to create memories was at its strongest to implant a specific memory into the minds of the Hilla Churls. The dream. In that memory, I would tell them a story just like my father did for me. It was a story of fairy tales and love, but more than anything, it was the story of us. So the thing that caused the Hilly Churls to calm down back then was Kariber's story. So... Eh? So that was his goal? That was the only thing he wanted. He had a device as powerful as the Loom of Fate at his disposal, and all he wanted to do was to offer the Illy Trolls a moment of comfort and peace. I can't change the world, not when I lost the very right to exist within it. Wait, so what are- Implanting those memories. All Illy Trolls That was the most worthwhile thing I could offer. They are not hostile anymore? I think it was very meaningful indeed. 
But now, the bedtime story is finished. And it's finally time to rest. Is that it? <sighs> oh, no! <sighs> and he's... And he's gone. Looks like I was too late to see Kari Bear one last time. Ether. <gasps> What'd you. Where's Dane? Please, please stay this time. Don't. <laughs> oh. Kari Bear's consciousness is gone. And this space will soon disappear along with it. Neither of us belongs here. That's why we're not tangible. <laughs> Were that not the case, I'd love to hug you too. Well, how about a conversation? What? Just... <sighs> will you... Answer all of my questions. You can't just treat this like a normal chat. The chance to just stop and talk like this is certainly not easy to come by. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I almost can't believe it's real. That battle earlier was tough. God, this looks so weird. The one against Dane, I mean. I didn't expect that after everything, he would still hesitate to raise his sword against me. I mean, I guess she's just happy to see him again. Like, knowing that this is actually Even occurring is so surreal. What are you going to do with the Loom of Fate? The Loom of Fate, huh? I still haven't found a way to utilize it to its full potential. But there's still time before the Heavenly Principles awaken. The Heavenly Principles are still asleep. Yes. For 500 years now. Ever since the Cataclysm in Conria, there's been no sign of activity. Yeah, at that point I'm just thinking Celestia's empty. Not long ago, you witnessed the Hydro Archon destroy her divine throne, yes? Yeah. Such a flagrant disregard for the rules, and still Celestia took no action. I suppose that's proof enough of the Heavenly Principle situation. They are not there. However, the Heavenly Principles will awaken. We just don't know when that will be, or what might trigger it. Just look at Kari Bear. He was so pure and single-minded. The space we now find ourselves is a perfect representation of who he was. Quiet and peaceful. Even as a hilly churl, seeing the terrible sight within the mirror wasn't enough to taint his spirit. He brought comfort to the people of this world even though he was denied the very right to be a part of it. Mm. So ask yourself this. Who was it that deprived him of that right to exist? Of course, that's only one example. My feelings about the heavenly principles are too complicated to explain in just a few words. Mm. <sighs> when will you come back to Lumine? Lumine? Uh... You haven't heard that word in a while, huh? You're the only one in this world who calls me that. She speaks. Of course, damn right you should speak in a time like this, Lumin. There's so much I wanted to ask you. But for some reason, I'm not interested in asking those questions right now. Part of Godog still wished Lumine had actually asked a few questions, but oh well. There's just one thing I have to ask. One thing I could never understand. Why do all of this? Why? Why can't we continue our journey together? Hmm. I mean, it's because of what he's seen in the previous cycle. 
At the end of my journey, mm -hmm. I arrived at a place known as the Sea of Flowers at the end. Do you remember? A long time ago, when we traveled between worlds together, you told me you wanted to find a place in the universe where that one flower was in full bloom. To have a place like that suddenly appear before me? Well, would you think of that as a coincidence? You mean... I miss you too, Lumine. But as this war continues to rage, and as I continue to seek that final answer, I don't even know how to face myself sometimes. Let alone my own sister. <sighs> What's going on? Oh, it's collapsing, isn't it? It's his consciousness. This space has lost its tether. I doubt it'll be able to exist much longer. Is this really all... How, how long we can reunite for? In fact, aside from our ability to physically interact with each other, there's something else you should know about this space. With Kari Bear gone, no. we won't be able to remember anything that happened here. Why does it always have to be like this? Everything in this space will be wiped from existence. The screen is literally... Including all memory of our reunion. No, don't do that. Why? You're only telling me this now? This effect's fucking cool, though. Okay, that's some Doki Doki type shit. Why? Why do you... <sighs> Why do you make it so hard, either? Fuzzy. Dude. Dane came by just now? It looked like he was injured. He didn't say anything, though. Just made sure that you were alright and left. Kind of seemed like he had a lot on his mind, but that's Dane for ya. So what? We failed. They succeeded this time. Let's think for a second. We were in that memory, and we saw that guy you called Kari Bear. Mm. He was the missing villager that we've been trying to find, right? And after that, uh, Paimon doesn't remember what happened. He told me about the Loom of Fate. Wait, really? What a score! I guess our commission is complete then. The missing villager, the person who only existed in people's memories, was Kyber all along. But now that he's gone, I'm not sure how to explain the things to the villagers. Well, what happened after that? Ether doesn't want us to know. I mean, honestly, Ether, what good does it do? You make Lumine forget. She's still gonna come looking after for you. I'm not sure why, but I feel like I lost something. Ah, there you are. <laughs> Sleep well? The village organized another search party yesterday. Mm. It didn't feel right to leave all the searching to the adventurers. So there we were, searching away, when suddenly this one guy said it all came back to him. According to him, one day around dusk, he was passing by this one tree outside the village, oh. and he saw our missing villager. There he was, sleeping under that tree all by himself. His parents came a little later to wake him up, and mm. they all left together. It looked like quite a happy family, apparently. So that's how Curry Bear said his goodbyes. That was the last memory he gave them. And we also remembered his name, Curry Bear. Hmm. Now, that's not a name you hear every day. Would have been helpful if we remembered it sooner. That's a unique name. Make sure you remember it this time. Well, I hope okay. so. Hey, Atosa, how's it going? Oh, it's you two. I was just about to go looking for you. I wanted to thank you. I was part of the search party, so I remember what happened to Kari Bear now. Honestly, I just can't believe I forgot something so important. I'm sure he wouldn't want you to forget him. It's funny, but... I have this feeling he told me the same thing. I just can't seem to remember when. I guess it doesn't really matter anyway. Life is made up of a series of memories. As long as I hold on to our time together, he'll always be a part of my life. Mm. I'm just happy I got to meet him. So, who cares what happens in the future, right? <sighs> okay, I'll admit. I'm just putting on a brave face. You'll miss him. I was right? dumped, wasn't I? Uh, Otherwise, why would he just I'm, leave like that without saying goodbye? I'm sure he had his reasons. <laughs> you don't need to comfort me. I'll be okay. It's just like Kari Bear said. It's the things we overcome that make life more precious. 
And you know, if he has a heart, maybe he'll come back and see me one day. Mm. Oh, right! Weren't you about to tell Paimon what happened after your conversation with Curry Bear? Right, what was it that happened? I can't remember. I feel like there's something in my pocket. Uh, a picture? Where'd that come from? Let Paimon see! You must get along with each other, the two of you. Oh. Huh, really? A group photo from an unknown time. A precious group photo that has surpassed the rules somehow. Being taken by some unknown person using an unknown means in a space that should no longer exist. Well, this was much shorter than I expected. For something like an Archon quest, especially focused on Aether and Lumine and Dane Slave, all this... I thought it would at least take a bit longer, huh? It's actually quite short. So, yeah, I, we, we kind of got to meet either face to face, although he didn't want us to remember it. I would say the biggest lore drops for this one is actually at towards the start of the quest, actually, when Daneslave said all of that um, lore before we went in to the place with the field tiller. Anything after it wasn't really too big. Like we know we know Ether's grudge with the heavenly principles, all that. Like he himself didn't really say anything new to us. Daneslave mentioned about who the sinners were. Sertologi, Rhindaughter, Vilndrovnir, they were all sinners. There's five sinners. And though they didn't cause the downfall of Conria, they used abyssal, they tapped into abyssal powers. But to me, it feels like there honestly wasn't a lot that happened in this quest. Maybe that's just me. Well, essentially, the abyss order succeeded. They got the field tiller's eye and the loom of fate is completed. Being able to weave ley lines is being able to create and reshape reality. And this early too, we're, we're like towards the end of Fontaine's art. Unless this is gonna connect into Natlin. Kind of interesting direction they went with this quest. I will have to say though, seeing the siblings actually side by side in that last sequence, like I said, it, it, it felt so out of place. At least it's, it's alright. It's just, like we got to see that, sure. It looks like our I guess the relationship between Lumine and Aether is still strong, but the thing is, Aether still made us forget. Like, that moment was supposed to be, for someone like Lumine, it's very special. It's very important to her. I'm not sure why, is that just necessary for whatever he's planning to do? It's kind of cruel. It's been such a long while, and the only... It's been so long since we've properly actually met back up with him. See, that's the thing. Maybe the photo will jog a bit of memory, because the photo is actually... I don't think either e expected that. What Last time we properly met him was in the One Point patches. Ah, I feel like him making us forget downplays this a little. But I'm so happy for Lumi that she got to feel this, this solace just for that brief moment, but... It kind of undid all that. That's what I'm sad about for her. This has been my reaction to the 4.7 Archon quest. <laughs> I guess uh, this is the um, the feeling carrying over from me that's just been playing Star Rail quests recently. That took me 11 hours to finish the finale. Oh my god. They kind of left the important bits to exposition instead. I'm not sure how I feel about that. You guys feel free to tell me. So for this quest, I think it's alright. It's decent. It's nothing... You know, we learned the fate of Kyber, we know him better, of of course. I'm glad that he got, he also found peace in his own way, you know, with all the villagers. Yeah, that, that was all there is to it, really. I'm really surprised this is how long it took to complete this quest again. Hey, let me know what you guys thought about it down in the comments. We learned a fair bit about the Abyss, the all the sinners of Conria. He brings out the comparison of Kariber, right? And how tortures of a life he had as a Hill Eternal before he died. 
and he wants to make peace for that kind of stuff. But that type of monologuing, you only hear from, like, villains. That's my concern, you know? The most Some villains are all like, hey, I want to make a better world for the tomorrow, for uh, everyone, and then they go down this path of just no return just destruction end up nowhere good nowhere better than when they started off that's what i'm worried about and yeah that has been my reaction to 4.7's bedtime story quests let me know what you guys thought about it down in the comments what you guys think they could have done or did you also feel it's kind of short because <laughs> i felt <laughs> i felt it was short aside from that thank you guys for watching I'll see you guys in the next episode Cheerio!